Can you talk about what it was like growing up in Southern Arizona and how important that is to you to be still living there and obviously fighting in the UFC uh, with that being your origin? Well, I'm, I'm proud to be from Tucson just because it's like, it's kind of a humble place. Um, it's a tough place. You got to be tough to live in that desert. It's very hot. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. There's, there's, it's like a, a happy medium behind some angry people out there and also the most loving people you'll ever meet in your life that will just open the door and let you right into their house. Uh, barbecues, you know, um, home gatherings are a big thing. It's a, I consider it a college town. You know, U of A runs the town. Everybody watches the U of A games. Everybody wants to know what's going on with U of A. And it's always very young too, because of that. There's always a, a, a new set of college kids coming every four years that reset the town with its, with its youth. So um, it's a pretty beautiful place. Uh, when you look at it, there's times of the year where it feels like you're in an armpit because it's so hot. And it's also, you know, you got the monsoon season, so the, tra the, the weather can get kind of crazy. But for the most part, it's easily one of the most beautiful places in the United States, in my opinion. You get a lot of snowbirds there because it's so beautiful that leave the cold places, leave their, their bad atmospheres to come just to Tucson just to relax. So, um, And, you know, I got a really good education there. I, I, I have a high school education there. And I've done a whole lot with it, with just a, with just a high school education. So clearly I've learned that it's a good education. If you, if you apply yourself, I graduated with the 3.0. So I did the best I could in high school and that's taken me a very long way. So as a whole Tucson, I'm very proud to be from there. I say I'm, I'm Tucson built and San Diego made because it is a kind of small economy out there. They keep it purposely a little bit small for my uh, experience because they want to keep the authentic Tucson vibe to it. You know, the lighting only has a, has an ordinance. You can only go so bright in the lighting and all of Tucson because they want to see the stars. They've been building the same freeway for over two decades. They're the slowest construction workers on planet earth. Uh, the infrastructure plan there pretty much doesn't exist. So those are little things that just make it seem very slow just super slow the slowest slow slow everywhere you go is 35 miles an hour um the the, the police force is very strict so it's safe to an extent um you know i saw you posted that you were uh, inducted in the arizona chapter of the wrestling hall of fame what does it mean for you to get that distinguishment because you know it's kind of weird I, I i saw you post that and i think a lot of people they don't see you as a wrestler in MMA, right? You have such an unorthodox striking style. They don't really think of you as being that grappler. So what does it mean to, to get that honor? Well, you know, when I taught, when I spoke to the man who, um, who is, chooses the inductees, you know, I was a little bit surprised to get that in the mail myself. Like I, when I think of the best wrestlers in the world, I don't hold myself amongst them for being perf perfectly honest. Uh, I'm a very good wrestler but I'm not a outstandingly great wrestler, which is usually what gets inducted into the hall of fame. But as I spoke to him, he said, you know, part of the reason why you've been given this award, it's considered it's there's different categories to being in the hall of fame. And I think that's what people got to understand when you wonder why I'm part of it. Like you, especially it's, it's considered the, they called me the outstanding American realm, which uh, he told me it's basically, you know, I, it's somebody who's used wrestling as a mechanism to blast off and to keep going with what we learned from wrestling. And also I'm a huge advocate for wrestling. Everything about wrestling is what I believe has attributed, like everything that I did in wrestling attributed to my success. I have no absolutely zero question about that. Uh, from the coaching that supported me to get through my seasons, uh, Pat Weber and, and Nelson, um, and the junior high wrestling team and the freestyle wrestling squad. I was on the national team uh, for freestyle wrestling and I, I wrestled year round. So I did the school season and then I did the summer season. And I did that nonstop all through high school until I started my fight career directly out of high school. And I also coached wrestling at local high schools when I graduated high school. So I had a big wrestling, had a big hold on my life. And I gave a lot to the Arizona wrestling community until I left to come to California. I gave everything I had to that community. It was everything for me. Um, and 
I've used the practices that I learned from wrestling, which is, you know, not giving up. When you give up food and water to be on a team, um, to just to win, it changes you. It, you. You realize you learn a different level of confidence in yourself. And you understand that, man, I can go through life like everybody else with no food and water and still succeed. That's a different level. And you hear of people who... Um, who go on fat, who fast, right? You, you, everybody's heard of somebody who's fasted in their life. It, even if it's nowhere near you, you know what fasting is. I thought about it is, at, at, during these times, especially when I'm getting ready to start my weight cut and fighting. So like, why do people fast? Well, the reason is you shut your body off. Like when you stop feeding your body and you stop giving it water, um, it, it literally moves you to a different realm. It moves you to your spiritual realm. You know, I believe we're spiritual beings living a human experience, not a human living a spiritual experience. It's just the way, what I believe. And when you go into taking away food and water, you become a spirit of yourself, let me tell you. And a lot of people haven't felt that. But when you get to the depths of that, like you are almost as dry as a bone, as dry as you can get without food and water, and then you're still running to get more weight off. You become a spiritual thing. I can't explain it any other way. You're like, you're gone. You're a shadow of yourself, and you start really seeing what you're made of. I, I wasn't going to ask you this, but now that you bring it up, what what are your views on? I know you come from the wrestling background, so like weight cutting is so natural in that environment, and obviously it's it's uh, expected in MMA. Do you think there should be some stricter penalties, though? Not penalties, but like rules with weight cutting, because people, you know. People are, are pretty big and they cut down to a pretty low level and then they get back in the octagon and they're blown back up again. And obviously, guys that fight at 55 or even 35, they don't weigh 35 when they get the octagon. Do you think there should be some discussion around that? Or are you comfortable with, with how the sport is now? I think anybody who thinks that there should be a discussion about that um, doesn't want it bad enough. That's a fact. Uh, it's part of it. We all choose what we choose. If there should be a discussion around weight cutting because it's unhealthy, tell me what's healthy about getting into a cage with somebody and fighting to the death. Let's be logical about this for a second. Nothing is. It takes illogical things to do illogical things. And it, if you're going to go fight to the death, that is actually a safety precaution that I take to stay alive. Nobody gets that because they don't understand because they haven't fought somebody that's that big. So you say, well, let's make it so nobody can cut weight. Okay, that's fine. But why can't we just have free choice? I, I notice like everybody wants to dabble in taking away people's free choices these days. If I want to cut weight, I want to cut weight. If I die cutting weight, I chose that. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Let's look, let's look forward to your fight against Pedro Munoz, UFC 269, a stacked card from top to bottom. Pedro's a tough guy. How do you view this fight? Um, Pedro's an OG in the sport like I am, I believe. Like, he's just been doing this since, you know, just as long as I have. Um, I see him as a teammate in this position. I see all fighters as a teammate. They, it's, it's hard to explain. Not a lot of people, I don't believe, use the sport the way I do. But each one of these fighters is going to come in at their best to face me. And so that means I got to come in at my best to face them. And so if we both come in at our best, I... I level up because of a guy like Pedro Munoz. I have to show up on my best um, in order to, to be somebody like him. So, you know, he's got great Muay Thai. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's got outstanding wrestling defense. And he also can wrestle offensively. He'll mix it in there occasionally and really catch you off guard if you're not careful. So he can take anybody down and he can keep you down with his Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, he's got power striking. He's knocked out some of the most dangerous guys in the world. So this is no walk in the park that I'm facing in about a week. How do you, how do you win this fight? Is it, do you just, obviously, it's so difficult for fighters to figure out your unorthodox style, and I feel like you really kind of lean on that. Is that how you feel like you always have the advantage in this fight? Because you kind of like the Roy Jones of MMA in, in a sense, where people haven't figured you out, even though you've been in the sport for so long. Well, you know, I don't think it's a matter of, yeah, like you're saying, like, I feel like, people could say, well, he's been figured out. He has losses, but it's not even about figuring out. It's more about how hard is it to, to get a tracking on this human being. And even if you beat me, it was still very hard to like get a track on what I was doing in there. And so I just need to be that. I need to be me. Um, be, be quick. Be, um, 
you know, be what I've always been since be vintage me, to be honest, just be what I've always been to win titles. And as long as I show up healthy, I'm a hard person to beat. So trust, trust my, uh, trust my instincts and trust what I can do. I've got a good team behind me. We've game planned well in the sense of knowing his tools. And we've had people that fight me with the same tools he has. And what else can you do, man? When it gets down to the nitty gritty, it's just a fist fight. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, there's some newer fans in the sport since ESPN took over. Um, well, not took over, but had to deal with the UFC. You know, do you think a lot of these newer fans view you as comment commentator Dominic Cruz instead of fighter Dominic Cruz? And uh, do you think that you have something to show to this newer audience since you've been in the sport for so long and now that this sport has, is gaining so many more eyeballs through this new media? Yeah, being with ESPN has exploded it. And I think, yeah, probably more people see me as – more people have seen me uh, as a commentator than they have seen me as a fighter. But I don't know what they view me as. I mean, I've always been a fighter, really. Um, I don't really worry about what other people view me as because that's when you start to head downhill. <laughs> yeah. When you start worrying about what other people think of you, it's all over. Um, you know, uh, as a fellow broadcaster, I think you do a great job uh, commentating. Did you have any difficulties getting into that? Do you value that in terms of – do you think that helps you with fighting, scouting different fighters? Or do you think it's just something, something fun to do to contribute to the sport? It's something fun to do to contribute to the sport to give back. It's something to give back to, um, to the athletes that have, you know – that are doing amazing things. I think people, like I kind of explained the weight cutting and I kind of explained um, fighting itself is not the most healthy thing. I, I appreciate being able to be in a position that I can explain that to people who just don't understand. Oh, that's so unhealthy. And it's like, you just don't understand. That's all it is. It's not, you're scared because you don't understand. But when you start, I, I, I love being in the position that I can break that down and explain that to people so that it's not so scary. It's like, oh, that actually makes sense. Um, but as for fighting, you know, it's, it's just, if it helps, I don't know, man. I like, I don't think so. I maybe, maybe, yeah. but it, it's just film study, right? Like you, you watch, if you talk to a football player, if you talk to a basketball player, what do they do with their coaches? They do film study. I think that being in that chair, um, breaking down fights, <clears throat> excuse me gives me more time doing film study if that makes me better or worse I, I don't i'm not sure to be honest but i would assume it helps that's why they do film study in, in football and basketball um i just do the best with what i got is it easy was it easy for you to make that transition to do that because i mean people look at what we do and they assume it's pretty easy and i tell them like no this is not an easy thing to do it's to me it's pretty challenging when you guys are able to do did you have any a rough transition getting into that it wasn't rough. It was because I, I just know the fighting so well. And to be honest, I've always asked a lot of questions and tried to learn as much as I could along the way while I was while I was fighting to try to understand, all right, why am I doing this? All right, why am I doing this? And so when I had that broken down for myself, then I can now do that for everybody else. So the the hard part is just the, the people in your ear when you're talking and the, the political correctness. I mean, it's very easy when you're on air for, you know, 12 hours, 10 hours straight to say something stupid, especially in the society today where everybody's so damn sensitive, like mm -hmm. sensitive with a capital <laughs> S yeah. to the point where yeah. it's like, I must sit there like this. Nobody's allowed to make mistakes anymore. Otherwise they say you're canceled. I don't think you can be canceled anymore unless somebody quits. So, but what they do is they make your life very, very hard with this wokeness nonsense. So uh, you just, you got to be very focused and you've got to be about the people and you got to be about the fighters. And as long as you're about them, you're about the listeners. And as long as you're about the fighters, you generally don't say anything stupid because it's not what I believe. It's what I'm doing for. Who am I making a difference for? And I find as long as I stay in that space, um, people who are woke are happy. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, you've been fighting for so long. Uh, what, what keeps you motivated, gets you out of the bed every morning, going to camp? Obviously, it's not an easy job, what you guys do. 
What keeps me motivated is, you know, uh, I actually got reminded when I went to that Hall of Fame a lot of why I do this. I had my, my uncle there, my aunt there, my cousin, um, a few close friends that have been with me along this journey for the past 20 plus years, my mom. Uh, just, you know, the people, the, a solid crew that came, my grandmother, who's 80 something years old, and she was just like ecstatic, like to see them there and be able to receive that award. It was not me receiving it. It was me. It was them receiving it through me. And I realized I still fight because when I, when I win, people get to win through me. And that fuels me so much because we, there's never a time that that people need a win in their life more than now to be given to them, uh, to make a difference for them. I know what I am. I'm damn best fighter in the world in this division. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to be in the hall of fame regardless. I'm, I'm a multiple time world champion. Yes. There's other great fighters. So I'm not saying like I'm the best at, of any, they're all amazing. The top 10 right now are all world beaters. The champion Peter Yan right now is, I mean, I'm so proud that I was the first because I've watched things that I've done in this sport, in this division, relay to all these fighters that are now at the top. They use tons of the tactics. Switching stance was unheard of and not seen before I came around. It's now a general trend. It's now what happens and you must. So when I was told it was wrong, it's now just the new only this. If you can't, then you suck. You have to be able to switch stance whenever you want. You have to be able to use all weapons on all sides. So <clears throat> it's an honor and I'm still in this because I get to still, I can still create a difference for so many people. And, the, and I feel when I won that belt against TJ Dillshawn, I held that belt up. I, I felt, you know, I've held my hand up with the belt because I was giving that to the people who, who were willing to receive to my, my fans, the people who follow me. And it, that's a crazy power. You know, the, the gift is in the giving. They say that it's, it couldn't be more true. It's hard to sometimes understand that it sounds cliche, but if you really break that down and understand it's the biggest fuel there are because there's an endless supply of people. And if those people are the ones you're giving to, you have an endless supply of fire. Switching gears a little bit. I'm sure you saw the comments uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley made about you for 135. Any any response you have to Sugar Sean? He was kind of throwing stones a bit, talking talking some mess that you and Pedro were on the undercard and that he was on the main card with a fellow unranked fighter. Any chance to respond to that? Oh, I actually didn't see that because, you know, I delete my Instagram to an extent sometimes, like in my own eyes. Like I have it running and I'm using it, but I'm like kind of like, I stay focused, you know, on the task at hand. But since I'm hearing it from you, I would say um, maybe he doesn't really understand the game yet. Uh, you know, the way I see it is he's doing all the media. I guarantee you he's making less money than me where he's at on the main card. So not only is he going to be promoting the card for less money, he's going to have all the media to cover and all the stuff to do. But he's also... Um, you know, he's facing somebody who's not ranked. So it makes him feel good and look good to face somebody who's not ranked. You know, he gets to, he has to look the part, but that's okay. You know, maybe, maybe I, you know, we do, maybe we do need him. He's a YouTube guy. So it's like the new way of the future is like these guys who get on YouTube and they promote. Um, you know, he had, a, he had a big fight against Marlon Vera. Do you think he hasn't had much competition other than that in the UFC? I mean, well, Marlon Vera finished him. So right. that's enough to say, and that's a ranked fighter. So I think if he really wants to talk, rematch him and get that win back. And then, you know, you'll show if you're as good as you say you are. But you lost. I mean, he smashed him. It wasn't even close. And realistically, if you think about it, I'm getting more views than he is. And this is what I'll help him understand this right now. Um, Sean O'Malley, I'm getting more views than you are. Like, you're on the main card, but I'm getting the undercard, and I'm getting the main card, and I'm getting promoted on both. You're only getting promoted on the main card, and you're doing all the media, and you're doing all the work, and you're making less money. So who's really winning? Thanks so much for doing that, Dominic Cruz. Uh, any final word that you would like to, uh, to say? I mean, where do you see yourself? I mean, you, you, you missed four years. You're 36. Do you feel like you're 32 because of that? Do you feel like you have another title run in you at this point for 135? Yeah, I'm only doing this to, to get to the top. I'm only doing this to go on a, to go for a title run. 
I'm only doing this to keep winning up, up, up. That's why I'm facing Pedro Munoz because he's ranked higher and it moves me up. Um, so, you know, I think that the reason why you're hearing something out of O'Malley is because he knows how important it is to fight a guy like me. I'm not mad at him. I'm, he's doing what he needs to do. He's saying my name. That's what you got to do if you want to move up. I'm, I respect him for doing that. I respect him for building the, the sport. Good job. Thank you. Maybe I could learn a thing or two about being a YouTube star from you. I'm okay with that. Uh, he says that he, he offered to fight you and that you declined to fight, and that's part of the reason why you're on the undercard. Is there any, anything to be said about that? Um, that's, that's his interpretation. There's no fact to that. Like, where's the factual basis behind that? I spoke to Sean Shelby eye to eye, and – that's not what Sean Shelby told me. I think he's got a manager speaking to Sean Shelby. He's not talking to Sean Shelby because he needs a manager because he doesn't know how to have a man-to-man -man conversation with another man. He's still a kid, still working. So it's okay. Um, but that's an interpretation. There's no factual basis behind that. But it's nice to throw that out there in media, right? It makes you feel good. It makes you look good. So that's what he's doing. Um, and I'm fighting Pedro because he's, he's higher ranked than him. It's not because I didn't fight him. He's not ranked. He's not fighting ranked fighters. He, he got finished in the first round by a ranked fighter. That's why I'm fighting Pedro Munoz. That's it. Well, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing you fight against Pedro. It's going to be a, an absolute barn burner, I'm sure of it. Uh, if there's anything last you want to say, here's your time. You have the floor, Dom. I'd just like to say... Um, I hope Chito Vera gets the credit he's due because he smashed that guy and, and he won his last fight. And I think that it, if uh, I wonder why O'Malley's not saying his name. I asked him about Chito Vera and he said, uh, I said, do you feel like you have to even the score with Chito Vera? And he goes, to me, it's still zero, zero, but I do look forward to fighting him again. See now, how does that even make sense? Yeah. He, that's, somebody he, uh, who, that's, that's called lack of responsibility. And that's what this uh, this new generation seems to be in. You've heard his excuse, right? That his art, that he, you know, had a dead leg, and he, you know, and that's the reason why he lost that fight. You know, okay. his his dead leg was because of Chito Vera. Like that's so. It's I either take responsibility or I don't. Does that sound like responsibility to anybody? You or you? Yes or no? Is that responsibility? You want me to get involved, buddy? No, I mean, I'm asking you. I'm asking you because you're asking me. Does that sound like a responsible answer to Chito Vera kicking his leg? I, uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, it's weird to be in this seat, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. You know what? So it's like, no, it's not. You know it. You just have a hard time saying it because I don't know why. Well, it's it's. I don't want to get in the in the middle of you know. I, I'm trying to remain a, at a different position and ask you. You know, you're the fighter. You know, this is. I'm also a, media. You are. So, you are. You so raise a good point, there. Dominic. You raise a good so, point. So how do I? You tell me as a media member uh -huh. and one of the best. You are. Dominic, yeah. Sure. And then also a fighter. Which hat do I get to wear and when? And That's which a good hat question. You, which hat do you and media get to wear and when? So I'm asking you a question. Does that sound, I'm not saying you got to fight him. Does that sound like a responsible, like he's taking responsibility for what happened from Chito Vera, yes or no? It's, it sounds, it's, it's, I have issue, I have issue with him saying that he's undefeated when he's not, in fact, undefeated. Does I don't that sound like a responsible thing to say? Is it responsibility? Taking responsibility, is he taking responsibility for the loss? I don't think he's taking responsibility for the loss. There you go. That's all I'm asking. That's not so hard. No, it's not. But, you know, you understand the position that I'm in, Dominic, you know. You understand the position I'm in. Sure, I but this, media right after this. Sure, true. But he's a fellow. So what's the difference? Well, he, you could be fighting him someday at, at 35, maybe. Cheeto will. Cheeto's gonna, Cheeto will cancel that guy out. He'll, he'll handle the light work. He already did. Yeah, I'm interested to see if, uh, if it goes down again what happens that second time around. It should go down again. Chito deserves that fight. Yep. And I'm going to keep going up the division after well, I fight Pedro Munoz, who matters. Pedro Munoz is a, uh, much, a much different fighter than him.
Okay, there you go. Yeah, no, Minos is a great fighter. And uh, that was a great fight that he just had against Jose Aldo. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that, too. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow night, uh, Rob Font, Jose Aldo? Two great strikers. Rob Font's a really fantastic boxer in this division. Uh, Rob Font is somebody that I wanted to fight because he's number two. So, again, I'm talking about people who are above me in the division, so they're not easy fights. I'm asking for harder fights. And uh, he fought Aldo. I think that was a smart move for him. He fights Aldo. He becomes a staple in the division and, and in history. You know, when you fight Aldo, somebody like Aldo, you really set your name up. And that, that's what I'm trying to do still. And that's what Fon's trying to do. So I really look forward to that. I think it's like, excuse me. I think it's like high level boxing with Font. I mean, Font kicks and everything, but his boxing to me is what really stands out. Um, his defense and his length, he's very rangy and long and good with distance. And then Aldo's a kickboxer. So like a very good defense. He's got, you know how you say defense wins mm -hmm. uh, football games or basketball games. Like Jose Aldo's defense wins him fights. He's, his defense is probably the best in the division besides Jan, I'd say. The way he just like stays so tight and he's able to return. Mm -hmm. So I really look forward to watching that as a as a fan of – the division. Were you surprised by that outcome, uh, Aldo and uh, Munoz? And and Aldo's not throwing that as many kicks as he usually does. It seems like it seems like he kind of switched up his style a, a little bit in his last fight. No, I think what's happened is guys. I mean, how many legs have you seen snapped in half due to checking kicks? So what's happened is you're seeing people's defense improve, and so you got to be more choosy when you decide to throw that kick. You can break your feet. Yeah, people don't know that if you throw a kick and somebody checks it and you break your foot, now how do you win the rest of the fight with a broken foot? So you got to be very smart too. Um, you can't just be throwing empty kicks is what I call them, where you're just throwing a kick without setting it up. So I think you're just seeing Aldo be more choosy with when he throws them, but he hasn't switched his style up. If you give him the opening, look at what he did to the champion, Peter Yan. He tore his leg up in that fight just like he's always done. The difference was Yan being what he is and being what the division's in uh, improved so much. He switched to Southpaw and won that fight as a Southpaw. That's, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about that makes a difference. Um, but he chopped his leg off first. So pay attention to that fight. If you think Jose Aldo isn't throwing leg kicks anymore. Okay. Uh, well, Hey man, thanks so much for your time. Uh, good luck to you next weekend. I really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate the interview and, uh, I'll definitely be watching and I'm excited. That's a stacked card UFC 269. Yeah, it's an honor to be a part of it with all these guys. They're pretty badass.